And after a break of one hour, welcome back to the second race. This is race 12, round six. Inaugural European Super Touring Championship at the Red Bull Ring. Very good race uh, one and reverse grid has provided a bit of a shock. Uh, the Europe car Civic of Heinz Winkelhock is on pole. Let's see how far he stays there. This is Adrian Michael Reese once again and Michael Swinnerton. Uh, we did promise some news about what seemed to be like the first major in incident of the championship between um, Swinney's pro protege, Anthony Ingram, in the HPI Scirocco when there was a bit of a tangle with Steve Percy there. Uh, Swinney, can you keep us up to date there, please? Yeah, so I talked to him about it. Um, he basically didn't realize the Ford was still there, so was moving over to take the racing line. Steve was still on the curb and moving onto the racing track. Thus, one car gets into the quarter panel of the other, and Ingram ended up in the barriers. I'm assuming he's not all right with it, though. Like, I would well, he's... That was... Ingram is, is, I mean, you know, he's man enough to own up to his own mistakes. He doesn't necessarily have to be happy about it, but he's at least owned up to it. Okay. Uh, this is obviously his uh, second uh, championship of the season. Um, is this uh, like evidence of starting to get burnt out because of that? Maybe. I haven't noticed anything different in him sort of, you know, physical and mental fitness wise. I think the fact that these races are so spread out over the course of the year, I think is helping that he can afford to do more than one. I mean, most drivers here and are doing more than one championship. It's just not everything is, you know, recorded. For example, Mark Kukabitsa was doing rallying um, about a month earlier. Race winner, of course. So, away they go. Front wheel drive row of six. The BMW's already um, making ground as Winkelhock takes the whole shot, leads into turn one. Grand home, Dalmas and Tassi. What a tussle already as the uh, Hyundai's are on the pulse. They were on the, they were a massive charge to win race one. This looks pretty good for race two, even though it's the first lap as the pack descends or ascends on Remus curve. Remus Hairpin. Yeah, both Hyundai's there wasting no time getting around Dalmas. They saw how much of a rolling roadblock he was in race one and were having none of it. And there goes Kubica on the inside of Dalmas. There's Bianchi up to seventh. <laughs> Was there a bit of a... That laugh was because there was a bit of a bump then, wasn't there? Oh, no. I, I, Kibitz is just a man that can't be stopped, apparently. It doesn't matter. You put him on the back row of the grid, he still finds himself in fifth place by the end of lap one. And therefore, Hyundai or even Winklehawk have got something to uh, worry about by the time we complete lap one, by the looks of it, or even halfway through. As wide goes one of the Scirocco, there's Vettel's BMW. Um, looking to get into the top 10 P12 so far there was Nilsson with a bit of a wobble on not seen much from this Ikea team so far this year we know that car has pace because that's the ex DHL car from the World Series that Jamie Webber won multiple races in Vettel hasn't Gavan, quite managed to get the same performance out of it Gavan up to 13th so obviously the uh, momentum uh, from race 1 uh with a pretty looking good so far. Three wide. Three wide into Nicky Lauda curve. Vettel obviously capitalising on that as Percy starts to fall back. Everybody just tripping over each other apparently a little bit. So Finkelhock managing to get the first lap completed in the lead. Percy almost up to ninth. Here's a massive traffic jam through Remus on board with Nussen. Back down the inside of Vettel. Mauro Heidfeld surprisingly not doing the same thing that Kubica did. Still only just maintaining not a top Not doing the same position. thing but decides to go around the outside of the Ford Focus into the corner. 
just got better on the brakes and had the better grip. I was going to say, Heidfield has always been the, the more patient, let the race come to him, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey kind of driver. And then we watch him do one of the most fatty, aggressive moves I've ever seen him make. Which is what you want to do in the final year of your BMW contract. Um, is there an option? I mean, we've not shared any other talks. I believe over there the... is. I believe Heidfield is enjoying this more relaxed. I say relaxed, but like the schedule and the traveling and whatnot is more relaxed compared to the, the World Supers. I think he's enjoying himself enough that I think he's going to come back on next year. He's not made any noises about retiring, retiring yet. So the first flying lap, Winklehock with the fastest lap so far as the midfield start to check over the timing beam. I don't think anyone else is going to beat that this time by. What a good start for the privateer Civic driver. Yeah, absolutely. This is his first taste of leading a major championship race. Obviously, he's seen success in lower divisions, in hot hatch championships and what have you. But given a big, you know, a bigger two liter engine and a longer wheelbase, He's definitely uh, taking the mantle with it. And he does have Gronholm all over the back yeah. of him now, and here comes the Audi to play. This is more what I was expecting from the team for this round. There we this, go. Yeah. This track, prior, despite the race results of the first race, this track does prioritize or, or favor the front wheel drive cars. So that I was said, worried however, Audi were going to be dangerous around here. Speaking of dangerous, Hyundai yeah, there goes Tassie around the outside, position. using all the curb and a bit more, keeping it hanging tough around the outside. Winklehock looks that like he his... can shut the door, but he leaves it open. Tassie's going to take second. There we go. So will Liuzzi see that and think, "Let me do that." Yeah, my turn. Meanwhile, Kubica, he has pulled away from Kubica there. Bianca Dalmas sixth, seventh. Morris top eight. The spread not too not too spread yet. And there goes Grand Tom breaking into the fastest lap times as well. Yeah, that's hardly surprising. Meanwhile we've got Hydefield all over the back of Sean Morris, wanting to have a crack at the Peugeot in front of him. And then just behind them, we have Stefan Nilsson trying to get around the privateer of Steve Percy. And there's Vettel still being present. In fairness, that we have noticed his uh, abilities in early races, just very stagnant in the previous race earlier on. Enough for us to think he was being very quiet, but um, there he is. Top 12, decent privateer points haul. Yeah, as I said, Vettel's just had a very, very quiet season. He's not had a single top 10, but then most of his finishes are points finishes, which means he's it's a very small bracket he keeps managing to land in for most races. And he almost copied the Heidfeld move earlier on, round yeah. the outside of Nielsen, didn't pull it off though. He's got to he be careful, spotted. he's got an angry, angry Audi all uh, approaching the back of him. And almost an angry Scott. Yeah, McNish not overly happy with his car's performance over the course of this weekend, especially as I said, I think a lot of people were expecting Audi to be the ones to beat round here, given their season performance so far, and then this track being the front wheel drive preference. Meanwhile, we've got two wide here, Volkswagen versus Ford. Volkswagen on the inside, they've got the preferred line, smacks the sausage that curb, was dangerous. gets on two wheels. Still manages to keep it in front, but the Ford is going to have better momentum here. It did look like he actually gave a nerf right to the side of Percy's Ford, though. Back to McNish. Um, my assumption was that uh, because of how well Audi did and the performance of this car in testing led the organisers to think we should better peg this back. But if they're going to peg anyone back, it now should be the attention of uh, BMW in terms of balancing everything out. If uh, Kibitz is going to get four wins almost back to back. Yeah, I don't so think it's so much because my... uh, there isn't really, I mean, I think it's more of a case of uh, 
Audi have gotten have just made the slight mistake of being a bit complacent with their their race setup and their car development since their earlier success, and now it's sort of catching up to them as every other team has made progress, but they haven't quite made as much progress. Um, German manufacturing complacency. Um, it, it happens. I didn't expect it to happen uh, to the to, to a racing team that has had pedigree in other championships. Especially when you've got three German brands all acting as works teams in this championship. We certainly do, especially for um, BMW and Volkswagen. All with touring car pedigree. Yeah, one I felt in ninth still. One of two country civil wars happening in this championship because obviously we've got Peugeot versus uh, Renault for the French Renault. honors here. And that is definitely going the way of Renault, seeing as they have one race win and tend to not go as backwards in races as much. As we well, see Dalmas just more with a bit of a the hell out of that Volkswagen. It was undecided on where he was going to put his car during the break in for the uh, Nicky Lauda corner. And therefore, and there's him. Mauro Heidfeld. Are we going to try more round the outside moves? Up the hill? No, okay, maybe not. Even Morris still couldn't think of where to put his car for braking for Remus. Yeah, so given how we saw me. Morris doing some very big slides in uh, race one, I get the feeling that car is pretty unstable on its brakes. Meanwhile, a race for Tassi. the lead here. Tassie's gotten around Winklepock, has caught Gronholm. It's now front-wheel drive that. versus rear-wheel drive again. And this is the best performance we've seen from Hyundai. Yeah, they've really worked something out with that car. I mean, that part of the track is obviously where it the, favours the rear-wheel drive car. Gronholm manages to defend through there. If he can just get these last two corners right, he has the potential to just pull away from the Hyundai a little bit and stave off this attack. Momentum in Tassi's favour. Gronholm still with the fastest lap. I wonder if he's going to try and break that. No, he already hasn't. And I don't think anyone else is going to, especially when you see Bianchi and Dalmas being the uh, cork in the midfield bottle. A definite gap there. Gronholm doing exactly as I uh, suggested slash theorised. He's managed to maintain through the last two corners, use the straight lines to pull away from the Hyundai, but now we're going to get to the part of the track that favours the Hyundai over the Audi. And will Tassi be able to do anything again this lap? Not there. Yeah. And whilst that's happening, far back to be filling his mirrors, mate. Whilst we're, whilst that's happening, what we're seeing with Winklehock is he's not capitulating by any means. Tassi down the inside. Okay, okay. Is this is where he gonna the move make is that gonna... stick? I think he will. The acceleration out of Schloss Gold and Hyundai lead in the Super Tourers. Grondon with a bit of a bump. He wasn't happy with that at all. So he's gonna. Oh, I was thinking he's gonna get that back through Rausch then. Rauch. Even. He had a go, but I think the car got a bit of a wiggle under him. Let's hope that Winklehock's uh, uh, results aren't as heartbreaking as I'm expecting them to be. Podium, I doubt it. Top 10, let's hope so. Uh, top 10, I think, is a, a fairly safe bet for Winklehock. Top 5, I think, might be... Uh... Yeah, they, they're closing in. You could see that uh, Liotzi and Kibitza are there, or thereabouts. Bianchi with enough, well, enough of a gap behind uh, Kibitza for Winklehock to think, yeah, this will do. But all depends on this second half and how yeah, the Winkle second half of the race drive the race of his life to keep a pair of angry rear-wheel drive cars behind him. Especially seeing as one of them is Marco Kibitza, who apparently cannot be stopped. And a lot more shade. As we head into the late afternoon here. Not here comes Leotzi, not wasting any time getting around the privateer Honda. Hook, line, sinker, there. thank you very much. I will continue with my day now. Hook, line, sinker, rod, and copy of Anglin Times. Use kind of good bits, sir. But 
but still. You, Rob Carr, are going to be very pleased with this. Absolutely. No. And even though I feel like this is, once again, a battle of when, not if, I still think a top five for Winklehock is very much on the cards, despite that slight slide. And something they can be very, very happy with, given yeah, these cars have shown pace. We know they have speed. They are X works Honda cars from the World Series. Um, so we know the speed is there for them. Just I not... genuinely thought the dark green paint was weighing them down, but obviously I was wrong. <laughs> well, it is a metallic paint. Like, if you look closely at that, it is it has metallic flakes on it. So you might be Did right, I'm... but in such a, in, you know, such a small amount that it doesn't actually matter because it's not Formula One. Their own personal bop. <laughs> Could be to just fill in the mirrors of Winklehock now, just really trying to scare him out of the way. Kubica when and his race if... engineer have seriously found something with this M2. Which if the Bob 3 week comes into play, I think the Euro organizers are going to be perhaps all over that for the next round. But Kubica Nudge. giving... Uh, I, to me that's a bit questionable, but... Maybe yeah, that was just a much. reminding him he was there, Nudge. That wasn't uh, It wasn't like what we saw in race one with the Peugeot, where we pushed him wide, deep into the corner. Yeah. And I think it's on for Schloss Gold then, if this is... Oh, we know how good the position. beam is on its brakes. Is it going to be that good? Not quite. Right. I wonder if okay. uh, race engineers have passed notes and if Kubica could try the uh, hide field round the outside route around there. Or whether the car's just not set up to do that. Because normally the way uh, again. BMW like to do things with their setup, or so I've heard, is depending on the track, one car will have a high downforce setup, and the other one will have a much lower trimmed out downforce setup, and they tend to swap between the two as to who's going to do what. Well, it worked for race one, not as effective for race two, uh, but you could say that's the cause of the reverse grid. But boy oh boy, the Hyundai's are kind of replicating that with their rear-wheel drive, uh, drive train as well. Well, I say they are. Liotzi's still third, but not closing in on Liotzi's the Grand still Home Audi third yet. and actually looks like he might be being caught back up by Winklehock. So I think Kabutzer is uh, pushing Winklehock forward. Yeah, look, they are... That is, this is now a group of three for third place. So I don't know whether Liotzi's just backed off just to cool his tyres down a little bit or whether he's legitimately cooked the tyres so they've worn a bit as the back of the pack starts to spread out as well this hopefully isn't enough to uh, cause a traffic problem for the leaders with three and a half to go I should think so This group three yeah. just spreading out a little bit, but Winklehock needs to be careful because he's still within uh, striking distance for Kubica there. And as I've said um, several times now, we know that BMW is very good on its brakes and it can catch people out on its under inner braking zone. And as long as it's front of you. not within grasp of Maro Heidfeld in six, who has now got ahead of Bianchi, and you can see that he's gaining uh, on this battle with the. Um, French duo 7th and 8th now, the Renault Peugeot uh, battle. Bianchi there, Dalmas there. Both v dobs um, running line astern, doing some formation flying, rounding out the top Vettel 10. Still, Vettel still 12th, Ingram now 13th, as, yeah, I was expecting Gavan to do a little bit better, but there's a, a pointless literally and figuratively effort from a Vodafone team that you know we're, we're gonna perhaps hear better news or more concrete evidence of a uh, team running to the end of the season Barbosa though front row at the start of the weekend back row at the end of it yeah, that's a bit that's... of a shame that's a that's quite clearly some kind of reliability issue that if they're gonna park the car now's the time to do it but this is a a definitely a weekend to forget for Pedro Barbosa and that Peugeot team. Meanwhile, what was once a fight closed. of three has now become a fight of four. Kubica there now finally Kibitza. getting alone alongside Winklehock, but they have all, all of these cars have caught 
Gronholm. So now second place is within the grasp of everybody here. Oh, so I feel like Winklehock is now going to... Oh, he's hanging tough around the outside. Showing Not a bit to the... Just because he's got four wins this year doesn't mean he's going to roll over and let him pass. Not going gently into that good fifth place. And meanwhile, whilst we were watching that, Liotzi took Liotzi. Gronholm. So it's now a Hyundai 1-2, just as it was a BMW 1-2 race one. So the rear-wheel drive cars defying the odds around what's supposed to be the front-wheel drive favoured circuit. The power is most definitely there in that BMW and also in that Hyundai. Hyundai have done their homework. Yeah, they've been slowly working on that car solidly all year. And I mean, they started off well enough with some slight wiggles and wobbles here and there in their race results, but they have slowly improved upon that car. And it's Winkelhock now... still on the shirt tails of Kubica, uh, but what we assume was going to happen might still not be the case. If Mauro Heidfeld is on the flyer that I see him having, even though Grondholm still got the fastest lap, Kubica now asking Grondholm questions before the Remus corner. Now that also might be a well, Kubitz is quite a ways back. Oh, Winklehog, okay. what are you doing? Break fit? Very possibly, very possibly. I don't see that being deliberate in any way, shape or form. He also might have just been distracted watching the battle in front of him and just completely missed his braking zone. I'll be surprised if that's the last year's brake pads in that Honda as well. Oh yeah, no, absolutely not. But, you know, this is a track with several heavy braking zones to it, and this is the end of a weekend. So if we're going to have brake fade, it's going to be now, it's going to be here. Kubica looks more of a threat to get a podium position than Grandholm is. Rounding out a rear-wheel drive podium might be on the cards. There, through Verth, goes the battle for third, fourth and fifth. All over the back of the Audi TTRS. Two different lines through the corner. Gronholm just managing to keep the gap. But you can see right there who has the grip and the stability through that corner and who doesn't. And who has who has the confidence? Gronholm looks I mean you probably can't see it. You probably deny it. That looked a bit worrying from uh, Gronholm there. Last lap and what a day for Hyundai, what a day for BMW, and what a day for the Europe car team and Heinz Winkelhock. That is a very comfortable good position. We do not expect any of the privateer teams to win a race, but they will be jumping for joy at the back of the garage down the other end of the pit lane as Gronholm almost tries to think about taking on Liotzi but has to defend from Kubica on the exit yeah, that Audi had a complete loss of grip going into the corner and then out of it and it's really hurt him and this and is of course going into the section of track that favours a rear wheel drive car so now he has to be very very careful about Kubica behind him definitely good on the brakes there that BMW you see Liotzi just sort of sleep, sneak off into the or Tassi sneak off into the distance with Liotzi second I was expecting Lutzi to be the race winner that uh, got there first for Hyundai, but obviously Hyundai will be very pleased with this result, as no doubt Lutzi will as well, but even more so Tassi. A win for Hungary. Norbert Tassi, of course, another one of those drivers with a lot of hot hatch experience. This is his first go in a, a bigger car with a bigger engine. And he's shown pace. He's. Hyundai have been right to hire him, and he's going to prove it right here. Yeah, no better way to show pace than getting a win in in the first inaugural season of the Euros. First season for Hyundai's factory effort. They made the right choice then in picking the European over the World Championship. Top five over the line. Heidfeld didn't uh, gain on the Europe car Honda. Bianchi and Dalma still there, seventh and eighth. Morris in ninth. We're going to see who rounds up the final minor points positions as we see the uh, Capelli. Uh, okay, so Guvan. Okay, uh, Ingram got a solitary point. Makes. Would that be making up for an accident in race one? Especially as it's um, 
not closing in on the Lloyds team for the privateer outfit, but does enough to get points ahead of Steve Percy in the Drivers' Championship. Kubica, 217. Here's Radisic and Barbosa. Barbosa sparing his blushes, I guess, as they were finishing 18th and 19th. Having a but Kubica, score for who was penultimate. He wasn't uh, giving up, even though they had spread out somewhat. So Kubica on 217 points ahead of Grand Home, 163. Mauro Heidfeld, 152. Uh, it, it's... Still early doors, I think Kubica's, um, unless something really, st- we'll say it again, unless something really stupid happens, I think Kubica's uh, got that in the bag if he just maintains a decent point all every single time. Very good look for BMW M Sport leading the factory effort uh, on 369 points ahead of Audi on 295. Hyundai, with that statement right there, getting into the top three of the uh, factory team standings, 250, uh, knocking Renault off a third spot on 231. Uh, an excellent weekend's worth of racing. That race obviously had some very good news to it. Not as um, thunderbolts and lightning as the first race, perhaps. Yeah, for sure. As I say, I was... I. I have been pleasantly surprised this weekend. As we know, this track, because of its long straights, because of its top-end speed preference, tends to favour the front-wheel drive teams. So the fact that we've seen the two rear-wheel drive works cars or teams just show up and smack in one, two finishes both races has been very surprising. And if you're Audi, if you're Renault, if you're Volkswagen... And to wiki, a degree, wiki. if you're Peugeot, that's worrying. Absolutely. Um, we'll have to see what they do for the shorter variant of the Nürburgring new circuit. The uh, one that the DTM uh, tend to favour, not the full Grand Prix layout. And we'll have to see you for that at some point in the future. On behalf of Michael Swinnerton, this is Adrian Michael Reese signing off for now. Good racing, everyone.